It's Pete from Chief Homesteading, and today we are going to be doing a little bit of work with the bees. Uh, it is fall out, and this will be my one of my last treatments for the bees for varroa mite. Um, we treat for varroa mite and tracheal mites, and they're basically parasitic mites. Um, varroa mites don't really kill the bees per se; uh, they kind of carry in disease, which kills the bees. So, if you have lots of varroa mite, you will have lots of disease in your hive and that'll make it weak so they just won't make the winter um in the past i've always used my government guidelines check for the amount of uh varroa mite that's present in the hive and if it hits the threshold i treat uh and if i it doesn't i didn't and um when you treat for varroa mite you use formic acid and uh, it is the same treatment you would use for tracheal mites. Tracheal mites are little mites that go in the uh, trachea of the bee, so they're very, very tiny. Uh, so all those hives that I didn't treat at all with formic acid, um, they didn't get any treatment for the tracheal mites. So I think that's kind of where I made a lot of my mistakes. So what I'm going to do today is uh, show you how I treat for uh, tracheal and uh, varroa mites in your hives. Um, the old beekeeper I used to uh, get all the information from, he was like, you have to treat with formic acid no matter what. And I just didn't understand because if it didn't hit the levels uh, needed to treat, why would you treat? But I think I kind of overlooked the actual impact the tracheal mites have it. So this year we are going to treat everything. Uh, if you watch the channel, I had five original hives this year uh, that I got swarms and I had one survive. So I made a bunch of splits. The splits are just big enough now to treat. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna go out, we're gonna treat all the hives. I've already started feeding them for winter. They're already starting to bulk up. Hopefully if the weather holds off for another three, four weeks, uh, they will have really filled the hives. The hives should be in good shape for the winter. So, but we are gonna go out and we're gonna treat uh, with 65% formic acid. It's a natural acid. Um, it's still considered organic because it's, uh, formic acid is found in honey naturally just in a weaker form so that's what we're going to do so i'm going to show you how i treat for varroa mite and tracheal mites so let's go okay so what we're going to use is 65 percent um formic acid which is uh, made by nod um i got some sandwich bags a bunch of them i got some bigger freezer bags and a bunch of you know those meat absorbent pads um these things are great uh for this purpose i got a, a plastic measuring cup some safety glasses and uh reusable gloves okay so you really should have a respirator with organic uh, cartridges you know my bad i i've never got one yet but you got to be mindful not to breathe in these fumes. Uh, getting this in your lungs is not good for you. So, um, and I'm going to show you how I do these. So first you take the uh, sandwich bags and I have 24 hives. So I'm going to get 24 of them. So we grab a whole bunch of these. So two. Okay, so I got 24. You get about half of them and you lay them on a piece of cardboard. And you get a thumb pin, uh, just basically thumbtack and you poke a bunch of holes in through all the uh, bags that's why you don't want to go through too um, many bags you want to make sure that you perforate all the bags okay so after you got all the bags perforated like that uh, i don't have a specific punctures per inch but that's kind of what i do you're gonna take the bag. We are gonna get four of these 
uh, absorbent pads and I'm going to shove them in here. And then that's one. We just keep going till we get them all filled with four. I find if you use less than four and actually do a full treatment of um, for varroa mites, um, the pads don't absorb enough and it kind of starts to leak out. And that kind of changes your um, treatment. Because the thought behind this is you fill your uh, formic acid in here. Uh, the holes, it allows the gas out, um, but it gives a kind of a slow release. It's not like it's just sitting out there in the open. It'll take about 21 days for all the um, formic acid to evaporate out. And that's about as long as you need to uh, treat the whole brood cycle in your uh, hive. One thing I find when you're trying to uh, build your homestead and you're trying to do a bunch of things, you have to pick um, pretty much the easiest way um, with the least amount of man hours you need uh, to keep all these things going. Because when you're working, it is very hard to balance all of this. So um, if you treat this way, uh, you will treat the beehive you put it in, you leave it alone for 21 days. It slowly uh, releases over that time period. You don't have to go back and do multiple treatments. Um, if you just use an absorbent pad, threw it in, uh, you would have to go back and you would have to do treatments every uh, so many days. Um, and the reason for that is actually to get the whole brood cycle uh, to make sure that you have got all of the varroa mites in that hive so we can really drop the population so my goal is to make sure that i don't have to go back to the bee yard uh, any more than i have to um, and this has really helped with that because it really limits the amount of times i actually have to get into the hives so basically i get your perforated bag that you've made and you put your uh, four absorbent meat pads in it you get a big ziploc bag you throw it in there you leave the Ziploc bags open. Uh, you don't close them. You get them all ready. Then you start pouring the formic acid into them. And then basically you zip this up and you're able to uh, carry it around, go to the hive, take it out, throw it in. You don't lose any formic acid and it's basically just kind of self-contained. So that's what, uh, that's what the plan is. I got a bunch more to get ready and then we'll start uh, putting the acid in the bags. So I'm gonna use 250 milliliters of formic acid and I'm gonna pour it into the inner bag. I'm gonna close the Ziploc and I'll close the Ziploc here. Um, so basically the formic acid is just gonna soak up in the pad and then we close this and then we'll fill all the bags I have and then we'll go put them in the hive. You really don't wanna get that on you. and you dump it into the pads. Close it up. And then I kind of try to make sure that you move it around in the small bag to get as much in the uh, meat pad is absolutely possible move on to the next one I throw the bags in a pail so I can just throw it in the okay, truck. So we're in the bee yard now. What I do is split the hive, I lift it up, and I set the pad in there and then shut it down. I try not to have to go through the hive too much or disturb them too much. Um, it is relatively quick.
first thing I do is I get out my uh, first thing I do is I get out my uh, bag get it ready and I lift it and then I set it down and just shut it and I move to the next hive it's really handy to have a top box to give the bees a little more room to try to get away from the absorbent pad uh, just the fumes and that so I leave it on there's not much up here but the hive is getting heavy so as long as I can get one box to be full of honey uh, I am going to close that up and that'll be what I use for the winter if they're able to fill the second box great uh, but I'm not going to leave an empty box on top of it because it's easier for them to uh, heat up a small space than a big space uh, especially a space that doesn't have honey in it so let's go to the next hive So that's how I treat with formic acid. It's really important to stay ahead of the varroa mites and the tracheal mites because it's really going to affect your wintering. Um, you know, these hives, I'm going to leave those pads in there for 21 days. Um, I will pull them and then probably right after that, I'm going to do a treatment of oxalic acid vaporizer. That will hopefully knock out the last of the varroa mites that are in the hive. And uh, some people say that the vaporizer uh, knocks out tracheal mites too. So hopefully that'll just be um, the last step. And then we can start packing them up. And hopefully in the spring, uh, we can kind of see some of this fruit of this labor. But uh, you know what? For now, they seem to be doing good. And we'll just uh, keep monitoring, keep feeding. And uh, hopefully they build up nice and strong for the winter. So that's about enough for today. You guys have a good one.